Okay, guys, um, there are some very unique energies here that are kind of tying my tongue in a knot. So thank you for bearing with me while I try to just get myself talking here and try to talk through these various sensations kind of one by one. How do I want to start with this? Okay, so first of all, yes, this video is going to be about the Draco. And I think part of my kind of strange feeling here is, of course, the Draco are a sensitive topic for many, especially because many people who watch my videos are Hadarian starseeds and Hadarians are going to be, with very good reason, hypersensitive to um, anything to do with the Draco, right? Because simply hearing that in word or feeling their energy could trigger your deep <laughs> kind of past life Hadarian trauma on that. So if that is you and you're sitting there wondering if you should be watching this video, I mean, if you don't want to be if you don't want anything to do with this, then just click off and forget about it and move on with your day. Um, that being said, <laughs> so if you're still here, um, what I want to do with this video is to kind of rethink the Draco just a little bit um, to kind of go beyond our perception of seeing them as these big, bad, horrible, evil forces in the galaxy that have done nothing. Um, but be evil, essentially. So first, just to acknowledge that, yes, um, they have done plenty of bad things. They have been conquerors. They have been slavers. They have been abusers and torturers and all of those very bad <laughs> things. And many of us have been on the victim end of the perpetrator-victim kind of relationship with them. So, you know, any fears, traumas, all of that that you might have related to the Draco are absolutely real, are absolutely valid, and I'm not denying any of that. I just kind of want to explore them and who they are be beyond that, right? Like, what else are they? What else are they? Uh, and I feel like this is very important for multiple reasons. First of all, we always want to see everyone, like as any group, right? Especially we're talking about this very, very broad, large group. Any group we don't want to boil down to just one big bad thing, right? Of course, there are individuals. Of course, there are differences in the people belonging to any group, right? Um, second of all, we um, want to be practicing unconditional love and non-judgment and even though this might be incredibly challenging for some of us when working with the Draco, um, you know, even those of us who were traumatized at the hands of the Draco in some past life, perhaps even in this life, right? <laughs> perhaps even in this life, in order to move out of this polarized state of consciousness, right? This is we're experiencing this because of polarity um, in order to move back into unity consciousness, back into oneness, in order to heal, right? All of these things, we need to rise above and, and rise above the duality mindset, right? So that's important and it helps us heal from our own individual wounds, our own individual traumas. And there's something else here I want to mention, first of all, a shout out to the person who asked me to make a video on the Draco. I don't remember your name, but I remember your comment and talking to you briefly. And thank you for that, because that invitation really opened up this portal for me so that I could make this, despite the fact that it's a bit of a sensitive topic. And, you know, I gotta say, um, so years ago, actually a couple years ago, one of my first... Uh, like Hadarian videos, I made a video about like Hadarian reptilian twin flame connection. I'll try to link that down below if I can remember it because that might resonate with you if this video resonates with you. Um, after I posted that, I was a little nervous about posting it, but a whole bunch of people came through and told me that like their Hadarians and their soulmate or their partner, their divine partner, however they perceive that, is a reptilian or is a, a Drake or, or is a Draco. Um, a lot of people, like a lot of people have told me this, uh, so many people, espe especially Hadarians, have mentioned that they have this 
kind of, you know, soul partner who is a reptilian or Draco. So many people have told me this. Um, and I've had several people come through saying that they, they are realizing that they are also, right, that they are also themselves, <sighs> that they have had lives as a Draco. And people sometimes get confused about this. Does this mean that they are bad? What does this, does this mean? Yada, yada, yada. So I know a lot of people are kind of like thinking about this and stewing on these kind of topics behind the scene. Um, So if that's you, this video is definitely for you, right? And I can definitely tell you that for me personally, um, I'm I'm very actually connected to what I call my reptilian star family, a group of benevolent reptilians. And I know I've also had this connection to the Draco. I'm I'm less clear on what that is for me. I know I've had lives as a Draco. I just I don't really remember them. I, I haven't really glimpsed much of that, although I wouldn't be surprised after making this video. I wouldn't be surprised if tonight um, I learn more about that. And I definitely know that there are people I relate to physically, that I know physically in my human life, um, who, are, who have a lot of very strong Draco energy. And so even if you don't, even if you're sure that you that you are personally not a Draco or never have been, and that and maybe maybe you don't think that you know any Draco beings, um, you can still relate to this reading through knowing that this Draco energy is out there, like in the galaxy, right? And it is important, it is an important energy to be understanding and to be integrating and to know that it's not all about bad. I, the big part of this reading is going to be me emphasizing um, how really to me it's all about the red ray, right? The red ray, the Draco to me are really related to the red ray and that's also going to be your root chakra. Um, all of this energy about relating to power and empowerment, personal empowerment, and how basically at the end of the day, to me, the Draco hold this red ray frequency of personal empowerment and making change. Personal empowerment and being a change maker. Um, and how, yes, that has gone bad. <laughs> that has gone bad. Um, but it wasn't really there fault, right? I mean, yes, everyone is responsible for the choices that they make, but uh, it's like, imagine that you have this energy within you that is all about your own personal empowerment and that is all about creating change in the physical and that these things in and of themselves are beautiful, right? We, we, we all want to be personally empowered and we all want the capacity to make change in the physical, right? But then imagine you come down into this layer of creation that is very dense, right? Very, very slow vibration, right? We're, we're all the way down here in this physical realm um, that has been in many times and in many places rather dark. So what happens when your energy of personal empowerment and your energy of making change in the physical, when that energy descends all the way down into this energetic realm, that is this physical realm in which the energy is skewing dark or skewing negative, well, that's how you end up with these themes of personal power and change going negative, right? Going bad. And so then you end up Instead of just focusing on your own personal empowerment, it ends up being power over others. And instead of create and instead of creating change through simply being the change and through inviting change in others and through making change through love and positive means, you end up forcing change on others. So I really see. I'm, I hope I hope I'm making this clear. Um, that's what the Draco are really about on the highest level and in their purest form of expression, the red ray, personal empowerment and change making. And it is, it was simply a side effect. Like they went bad. Many of them went bad and they have done these bad things because it's just an experience of duality, right? When, when that is your theme, when that is your soul theme and you come down into an, a zone of creation that is chaotic and easily dark and easily negative, 
then that is what happens. Then when personal empowerment and making change, when that skews negative, and of course, in this physical realm, all energies in this physical polarized realm, all energies that come down here will find expression in the positive and in the negative. They simply will. That is simply, that, that's just how I see this working, right? To me, that's just how I see it. <laughs> the ener All energies descend, become polarized. And so then we discover collectively what happens when the red ray goes bad. When personal empowerment goes bad, it becomes power over others. When making change goes bad, it becomes forcing change through through force, right? Th through through negative means, right? And that is just part of what all part of what is, <laughs> right? Part of what is in a polarized reality. So that's why I see like on a higher level on a cosmic level from the source perspective right from the biggest bird's eye view possible it's just simply part of the pattern of how our reality has been so that's the background of how i see this and so healing from any trauma that has been done to you by the Draco or by anyone who has exercised power over you and who has forced you to change, right? who has forced you to change, healing that, that trauma is so incredibly important because that heals your root chakra, it heals your relationship to the red ray. And then when you can do that, now you can be whole, right? And now you can be whole in this physical level, in this physical environment. And now you can be, you can remember how to be personally empowered in your human body. Now you can create stability and abundance and even wealth and the life that you desire in the physical reality. Because people who really have stabilized the red ray they have lots of money, they have lots of freedom in the physical, um, and they don't have people exercising power over them because they have stabilized their red ray. It is in their, their root chakra, right? They, they live the lives that they really want to live and they live them with empowerment. And it has been incredibly difficult for most kind of, it's hard to describe, you know, basically for most of you who are watching this video, right? Because your root chakras have been so damaged or maybe your root chakras in all of your human lives, maybe they've never really come fully online to begin with because you were never really able to descend your consciousness fully into the red ray, never fully able to descend your consciousness into this physical reality because you didn't want to become like them because you saw and because you have experienced in past lives that exploring personal empowerment and exploring the, the ability to create change in the physical there's this fear of it being bad of being evil of going wrong or causing harm to yourself or to others and so been holding your feet above the ground right i think i've been talking about this in recent videos but this is kind of i think this video is an important like conclusion concluding or or a concluding video to this kind of theme that's been going on and on and on um Yes, and okay, what else here? This also is related to like your relationships because some of you, and you'll know if this applies to you, right? You will very obviously know if this applies to you. If you have been in this life in a relationship with somebody who really vibrates with this Draco energy, maybe you know that they are definitely Draco um, or maybe they just have this kind of red, red ray energy, right? Maybe you see red in their aura. aura. Maybe you just know that they have these themes of power um, and ambition um, running through them, right? Maybe you just see them that way. <sighs> Especially if you're Hadarian, for my Hadarians watching this. Maybe you felt drawn to these type of people, maybe you have loved them, maybe you still love them, but maybe you have had to learn through 
long, unpleasant experience, that is, it is impossible for you to be in a relationship with them in this life right now because they, they're so out of balance and because they're still experiencing their Red Ray or their Draco or their themes of power, they're still experiencing that in a negative way. And so you've had to remove yourself or maybe you are now realizing you need to remove yourself from their energy because it's just too toxic for you, it's too negative for you and it damages you, right? So this could also be running that direction for some of you in terms of your relationships. So all of the work that you do, healing your relationship with the Red Ray, healing your relationship with the Draco, these themes of power and these themes of change making, the more you heal this, the more you integrate this, and the more you explore beyond the beyond your trauma, beyond the this is bad, this will always be bad, the more you begin to open up and begin to perceive the higher frequencies of the red ray, the fully like healed, transcendent, divine, like the positive, the good, the benevolent um, manifestations of personal empowerment and the beautiful experiences of creating change in a positive way, the more you tune into those levels of consciousness, that is massively going to help you heal, them heal, right? The collective heal. It's just, it's good for everybody. And one more thing I just want to add in my kind of preamble here to kind of get this all out. Um, I've just had, I've had several people mention to me that they have a, a partner on some level. Some people know their partner in the physical um, some people connect with their partner energetically and spiritually, even though they are on, in physical separation, and they know that their partner is is a Draco, and but like a benevolent Draco, okay, a benevolent Draco. So maybe somebody needs to hear that. <laughs> maybe somebody, needs, if you're sitting there going, "Oh my God, I think my partner is this Draco type of energy, or has this Draco themes within them." Um, you're not the only one thinking that and no, it doesn't have to be scary. It doesn't have to be bad. There are benevolent Draco. Um, some Draco have always been benevolent. Some have have experienced a pole swap. Maybe they were the big, bad, scary Draco that we all think about. Um, and maybe they have healed and transformed and now they are, you know, now they have balanced that out. Now they have come benevolent or maybe now they have become like neutral, which is actually kind of the goal, right? The goal is the goal of the way I see it, the way I see it. We don't want to just keep flip-flopping between negative and positive, negative and positive. Becoming, having everything becoming perfectly positive polarized isn't the goal because that is just more polarity, right? That is just more polarity. And that is what got us here in the first place of having, you know, some beings being purely negatively polarized and some beings being purely positively polarized. When you have an imbalance in polarity, even if it is positive polarity, then we end up out of balance. So really, we're trying to become whole, trying to become neutral. And that is how we ascend, or that is how we remember who we truly are. That is how we regain the source perspective. That is how we become whole in ourselves as a collective, as a universe, as universal consciousness, right? <sighs> Becoming perfectly balanced, perfectly neutral, perfectly whole. So anyway, yeah, as you can see, there are many different ways you can be feeling this out. And it's up to you to kind of navigate the different energies and themes I'm kind of throwing at you here. <laughs> so that took a long time for me to spit that all out. <sighs> Let me just get some cards. You know, I, I kind of feel like maybe that, my, my, my whole preamble there, my long, <laughs> long preamble. I had my eyes closed. I didn't even know how long I was talking. That is largely, I think, the message here. But I'm still going to get some cards and just see what else wants to come through. Because I feel like such a strong, like, concluding energy here. It's like we're trying to get closure on something. We're trying to zip something up. We're trying to finish something. We're trying to bring two halves together. We're trying to be done with something. We're trying to be done with this conflict, right? We're trying to be done with this confusion. 
We want to be done. We want to be done. Fourth house roots. Man, this card has been popping lately. Let me just get a bunch of cards out and see what there is to see. You know, I gotta say, even my, my nail polish here has a message for me. I painted pink and blue on my nails. I wanted to just paint pink, but the blue was like, no, 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 no. You gotta have pink and blue. You gotta have half and half, pink and blue, make it even, <laughs> right? Um, and I, and I, every time I picked up the blue, and I normally really like blue nail polish, but I picked up the blue bottle and I, it felt like the opposite of what I wanted. And yet I knew that I had to put the blue along with the pink and have bat like this balance between blue and pink. So fourth house roots, this is, to me it's like we're all family. Right? We're all one great big cosmic family. And in the beginning, we were all the same. Or all, not exactly the same. In the beginning, we were all part of one, right? Yeah, we, in the beginning, we all belonged together in the in one home, in the land of milk and honey, right? And if you watched my previous video on the Lyran star seeds, I expressed my my opinion, my belief, my feeling, right? My feeling, my intuition that the Draco were originally like descended from the ancient Lyrans, that the Lyrans are essentially have seeded many, 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 many different of these different star civilizations that we are aware of, plus many that we are not even aware of, that we don't have names for anymore, that we haven't recovered in our channeling and all of that. Um, and you know, since I created that video, I have had more and more and more confirmation that confirms for me personally that the Draco are essentially a splinter group, a subgroup, a a descending group from the Lyrans. And so for me, that is really what resonates for me. And, you know, I've never heard anybody else confirm that or receive that. So, of course, take it as, a, as it resonates. You don't need to tune into that. That doesn't need to be your truth this is an infinite multiverse where all things are possible <laughs> but i am throwing that out there and it definitely rings true for me definitely rings true for me so so this whole like hearkening back to a universal beginning um on one level this is hearkening back to this universal beginning in lyra but it's also of course more than that hearkening back to this universal beginning that is source consciousness, right? We are all one, we are all one. This thinker, oh no, wow, whoa, I completely saw a different, that was so strange, I completely saw a different card when I looked at this. This is not, <laughs> I looked and I saw the thinker card. Some of you have this deck and you know the thinker card. It's kind of similar colors, maybe that's why I thought that's what I was looking at, but <laughs> That's not that's not the card that's here. <laughs> that was so strange. It was like watching the card morph before my eyes. So anyway, the real card that is here before us now is time to go. Time to go. Um, everyone going on different journeys, right? Everyone exploring different things. Um, I can actually see like a wheel, right? All beings. I mean, specifically, so we're talking here like, you know, the Draco, the Lyrans. All of our, you know, the Syrians, the Pleiadians, all of your favorite, the Hadarians, right? All of your favorite star, star civilizations, all beginning with some kind of a hub, right? And that's, that's source energy. That's the great central sun that, that is most high. However you perceive where we all came from, we all began there, right? Then we went off to explore different paths, different paths, different paths, different paths, right? We went off to explore. Time to go, right? We all had time. We all had I could almost say like different assignments and some, some, uh, that's how the Draco kind of feel this, right? It's interesting. So before we all split off to go on our different journeys, 
everybody, everybody, every group, right? Every group of consciousness perceived that differently. Some were just like, wow, I'm in so much love <laughs> with the universe. I'm going to go off on and explore a journey of love and see if I can discover more love in the universe. Some were like, I'm going to go off and just see what there is to see because I have so much curiosity. Some were like, I'm going to go off and build a new world, right? The Draco I'm seeing is that they experienced this as a kind of assignment. So in the beginning, the soul group that would become the Draco and that would explore everything that the Draco have explored, explored the art of war, right? The Dr Draco civilization has, is very like military themed type of civilization um, with lots of physical violence and um, a low capacity for pro-social emotions, pro-social emotions. Um, because of course they kind of, and a, and a low a low um, a low capacity for empathy, which is obviously a major pro social emotion. Um, but, but even like a low capacity for empathy for their own selves. And of course, this is kind of necessary because if you're living in this kind of military, violent, hierarchical kind of civilization, you don't have a lot of room for empathy and compassion and love because that would just hurt, right? That would just hurt. Um, so anyway, the soul group that consented to go off and become the Draco to explore those experiences in the physical world, they saw it as a kind of assignment because they saw that the universe needed this and they saw that the all that is, in order to be complete, in order to be all that is, had to have somebody doing this. And so they were kind of like, well, <laughs> this has been assigned to us. This isn't going to be easy. We are going to have long eons of pain and suffering, and we are going to inflict pain and suffering. And it's going to be extremely challenging, and it is going to ultimately damage our own souls, damage our own consciousness. They saw that because in when you harm others, you harm yourself, possibly even more, right? So they knew that they would be out there causing harm to others, also causing harm to themselves. And they knew that at the end of the, of the road, when the dissension cycle was done, that they would have to heal and stitch their souls back together and they would have to seek forgiveness and that they would have to forgive themselves and also there's like a subset here I can feel this like subset of the Draco like putting up their hands and going don't forget about us we are very important and so many of you who resonate as either being Draco yourselves or having a close partner who you feel is a benevolent Draco this is important this is for you guys um I can feel you putting up your hands and going hey 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 I was never like that. I was never like that. So this is a very important subgroup. I don't know what to call you. I'm just going to call them the benevolent Draco who kind of held the torch, held the torch and remained who you were, who never fully embraced the Draco themes of destruction and violence and war, who held the themes of personal empowerment and held the themes of making change, who held them in a positive light and who remembered your connection to source, who remembered love, who remembered empathy, who remembered compassion. And there, there is this subset of benevolent Draco who maintained that, who held on to that and who carried that, like carry the, the bearers of the torch, I would say. Wow, I'm getting, I got a really emotional when I said that, massive shivers, the bearers of the torch, the bearers of the torch, the benevolent Draco, who somehow managed to descend into some of the darkest, most negative, most violent, most physically painful energies for untold eons of time and held the torch, who, who were the bearers of the torch 
for so long and no matter what was done to you and this is you guys were of course um this was extremely difficult because you were the others inside of your own civilization inside of your own soul group you were the others because you were outsiders inside of your own draconian soul group and you were often persecuted or you were often shunned or you were often victimized because if you were an unwilling to do the things that the other Draco were doing, of course, you couldn't really... <laughs> you can imagine how hard that was for you to get along in that kind of civilization, right? But you did it. <laughs> Somehow you did it. Somehow you did it. And it is so important. Oh my God. It is so important that you did this because... <sighs> how, to, how to describe. You bore the torch. You carried the light. You carried the love within the Draco Collective, within the Draconian Soul Group. And now you can spread this love throughout the Draconian Soul Group, throughout the Draco Soul Group. You carried the love, the light, the source codes is what this really is about. You carried source codes that the others like expunged from themselves. They rejected this source coding because it hurt them too much, right? Because if you are in this Draconian group when the Draco were doing the big bad things, they they rejected the source code of love and light and compassion and empathy and all of those things. Even the connection to source, they the other the, the negatively oriented Draco essentially severed their connection to source. The benevolent Draco, the bearers of the torch, they maintained their connection to source and that caused caused them so much more pain because you had the you maintained the capacity for compassion and love and empathy and you knew you, you you felt inside of you the connection to source so you experienced so much pain by seeing harm being done to others and sometimes this almost drove you to madness because you would look out at your civilization especially in times of war especially in times when your civilization was conquering other planets enslaving other species it drove you almost to a place of madness <laughs> almost to a place of madness because you couldn't even like make sense of this this is actually why i was seeing that thinker card right it like affected your mental body it almost sometimes it almost broke your mind because it's almost like you couldn't even believe like how could how could this be happening right it almost broke your mind with like how could this be happening but so you persevered through so many lifetimes, through your own suffering, your own struggling, and you carried the torch, you carried these source codes, these source seeds, and now you can give them back to your own kind so that they can reconnect with source. Holy shit, do you understand how significant this is? Somebody had to hold the torch for the Draco from within the Draco collective itself. If you hadn't have done this, it would have been so much harder for the Draco to reconnect to Source and to heal their own souls and to open back up to empathy and love and light because it would have had to come from outside. And when this, when something has to come from outside, it has to penetrate. It has to be like forced in, right? It, it, it's so much harder and it would have taken so much longer Okay, if the Draco had to reach had to retrieve their source codes from outside the Draco collective, it would have taken I don't even have a word for how much longer. This would have changed the course of evolution for the entire universe. Because things would have to happen to the Draco to somehow get the source codes to penetrate into the collective. Thus changing the entire evolution of the universe. And you know what? There is <laughs> timelines where that has happened, but those are not the timelines that I am tuned into. So I don't know anything about those. <laughs> the, tune, the timelines that I am tuned into, largely because of the fact that you benevolent Draco have held these codes within you, you have created these timelines where it is now possible for the Draco to be healing, to be reconnecting to source right now. Right now it is happening. 
one at a time, one by one, you are sending the source codes out through the Draco Collective and it's a rippling wave, right? It's like a pebble dropping in a pond and the ripples go out and the Draco are individually one by one going on their own personal journeys to reconnect to source, to reheal, to heal their souls and to experience love and light from within. And it's because of you. So you, you, you have changed the universe on a level that is almost indescribable. I don't even have words. You'll just have to feel into this. If you had not done this service of carrying these source codes, of bearing the torch through all of these extremely challenging lifetimes of being the torchbearer, of being the benevolent Draco, the universe would be so much darker in such a lower state of consciousness and it would essentially be set back an extremely long frame of time but that's not that's not where we're at now thanks to you and this brings me back to the red ray and our root chakras our earth star chakras and man of crystals um inventor this is what this would be like the king of swords i think in a traditional tarot Let me get more cards because this is about now we're returning to earth. We're returning to the human experience. What does this mean for us in terms of our root chakra, our earth star chakra, our connection to our bodies, our connection to the higher frequencies, benevolent frequencies of the red ray, our ability to create change in our lives, to manifest the lives that we desire, to feel personally empowered, to remember that personal empowerment is a good thing and we don't need to be afraid of it. Hanged man. Eight of wands with harmony. The guys, the lovers is at the bottom here. The lovers. balance and harmony this takes me right back to the very beginning of the reading right when i was saying this is about transcending duality healing the polarity right coming into harmony coming into harmony that's what this is about that is what we are doing This is really abstract. Um, I don't use this deck that often actually because the energies are very, I don't know, very mentalized, very abstract, very air, right? And I'm just really interested. There's kind of like a, a figurine, there's like a face here. It's hard to even see what it is, but I see this kind of as like a, a, a person like falling through this portal, falling through this vortex, this hanged man. Um, there's, so there's been an inversion of perspective. That's all I can say about this, an inversion of perspective. Somebody has changed their mind. <laughs> um, this man of crystals, this man of air, I could say, has changed their mind. The, the, there's this energy here of some... <laughs> wow, I could just keep repeating that. Okay, so someone's mind has been changed. Someone has changed their mind about something. And it is that is important. That is how we come back into harmony. Okay, that is how we come back into harmony. And the hangman, of course, is all about a shift in perspective, right? Going within to find this shift in perspective. So I'm hearing like a meeting of the minds, a meeting of the mind and body. 
So there's multiple levels that you could be experiencing this message. For some of you, this is literally you and some other human going through some kind of change of heart, change of mind. It's like maybe there's something you always used to disagree about and now you're coming into balance with this. Maybe this disagreement used to cause a lot of friction in your relationship and now it's like either you're just agreeing to disagree or you, I think it's partly agree to dis, there's levels to this. It's like first you agree to disagree, but then you start to understand the other's perspective and then you go, wow, I finally at long last understand where you were coming from. I finally at long last understand why you are the way you are. I finally at long last understand that when you were hurting me, really you were also hurting. And when you hurt me, you were showing me how you feel because when you hurt me, I I'm essentially feeling your own pain. So when you hurt me, that was a way of you communicating to me how much you have, have been hurt. Wow. So some of you might literally be experiencing that on an interpersonal level. Um, but of course, there's levels and layers and layers to this. Um, this is also like, this could be like Hadarians and Draco just as a collective starting to understand one another. Like Hadarians starting to understand the Draco as a collective and understanding why they are the way they are and why things unfolded the way they did. The Draco also having this realization of what they have done, like really understanding um, what they inflicted onto others. This is interesting. It's like they weren't, some of the Draco, when they did the bad things, just, I'm just saying it that way, just to, as a catch all, right? Cause you know what I mean? Um, they like literally weren't capable of understanding really what they were doing. I mean, they knew what they were doing, but they didn't feel it. Right? They didn't feel it. They just kind of were like, this is how it is. This is how reality is. And they really just saw reality as harsh. And one where pain goes around, what go, like pain goes in circles. And it's a dog eat dog world. And either you get to the top or you be the one who goes down and suffers. So they really had this incredibly limited perspective and they weren't really able to shift out of that and to really understand that it didn't need to be this way. They're starting to understand that they were the ones that, man, there's a huge amount of like accountability take, like, like accountability taking going on here. They're kind of going, wow, I, I didn't have to do it this way. And a lot of this is, so the negatively oriented Draco, which is a large portion of them, are looking at the benevolent Draco going, Oh my God, you guys never, you, you never did the things that we did. I thought I, so some of them are saying like, I thought I had to do the bad things because I had no choice. But now they're looking at the benevolent Draco and saying, wow, they chose to be good and they remained good. They remained true. They remained benevolent, even in the face of the most challenging circumstances. It, it, I can, I can like literally feel some beings here, this group of beings, the negative Draco having this realization going, wow, I didn't need to fall into this levels of negativity. I could have held myself apart from the violent environment that I found myself in. I could have held myself apart from the negative environment, the negative energy that I found myself in. They're, they're actually kind of rediscovering their hermetic principles and they're rediscovering very interesting. They're kind of rediscovering their own process of self-empowerment because they thought that power was power over others and that was the only way to get it. But now they're starting to realize, oh my God, true power, 
true self-empowerment. They're starting to distinguish between power, as in power over others, and self-empowerment. Starting to realize, wow, true, like power is what I want, but really what I want is self-empowerment. They're like iterating up into the higher frequencies of power and going, wow, wow, really what I want is self-empowerment. And really the way to be self-empowered is to be sovereign no matter what energetic environment you find yourself in. Because, you know, it's like the Draco found themselves descend, like they found themselves in this extremely challenging energetic environment, like literally the energy that they were in, like in the Draco constellation, like in the beginning of, like the Lyrans went to the Draco, wherever they went in the Draco star system, I don't know exactly what star it is, right? But they, they went and they, There's this feeling of finding themselves stranded on this planet that was extremely harsh, both physic in terms of the physical environment, but literally the energetic environment. It's almost like there were like weird, like really weird vibrations. I can almost feel like weird warped vibes, vibes coming off of the star. I don't know what would have to happen to a star to make a star have weird warped vibes. I don't know. I've this is I see stars as basically being universally benevolent and whole but I don't know it's like there was something that had I see like a black infection in this star this is super weird guys I'm just like getting this right now almost some kind of for lack of a better way of describing it a black infection in this star and so this star the Lyrans came from the Lyran star system and they found themselves in this star and they were somehow stranded there or like they were on a planet around a star right <laughs> they were in the star system and this planet was very harsh and they were kind of stranded there and there was something like this black infection coming off of the star, coming off of their sun, right? And so this star was, their sun was emitting this really warped negative type of vibe. And so like imagine just trying to exist when your entire energetic environment, when your sun itself is like emitting negativity, is emitting like harshness and despair and desperation and just emitting really low bad vibes. Like I don't know how that is I don't know how that is able to be. That is beyond my understanding at this moment, but that's what I'm being, that's what I'm seeing. That's what I'm seeing. Um, so take it or leave it, right? <laughs> um, and so the vast majority of the Draco just essentially threw themselves into that energy because how could they do anything else, right? How could they do anything else? It was like this, this, I mean, they weren't even, in the beginning, they weren't even Draco. In the beginning, they were the Lyrans, but they were slowly changed by the physical harsh conditions of this like barren, jagged kind of black rock planet. Um, and this harsh energy coming off of their sun, slowly that changed their consciousness, that changed their bodies, right? They evolved in many different levels. Um, and they had to like engineer themselves to survive and they had to engineer their consciousnesses to survive. Um, and it really just stripped away their benevolence for most of them. And it was really only the, right, the, the bearers of the torch, the keepers of the flame, the benevolent Draco, these were beings with very strong, like, Virgo energy. I say Virgo because it's, like, hermetic energy. These are beings who were naturally able, like, more, you know, because everybody has different um, vibrations within them that are stronger, right? So the benevolent Draco were able to be more hermetic, were able to be more like Virgoan or like virgin even, um, to hold themselves apart from the prevailing energy. They were able to hold themselves apart from everything else that was happening. And that is like a Virgo, that is a hermit type of quality. So I'm just using those as like an example here. So now the, the negatively oriented Draco are kind of looking at the benevolent Draco going, wow, you, you were able to withstand these like beams of negativity and you were able to hold yourself apart and you were able to remain personally empowered. So anyway, so this is like a huge realization that the negative Draco are kind of going through right now, um, you know, individually in their own different ways and kind of larger as a collective going, wow, I want that. I want to be able to hold my own personal empowerment and to be true to myself, to be who I really am. And a lot of them like don't even know who they are because they have been so scrambled 
by the negative harsh energies, right? They've been so scrambled. So they're trying to like put themselves back together, put their identity back together, rediscover who they are, rediscover that maybe they really can be good, right? Maybe they really can be good. Because imagine if you have if you have this memory in your soul that you have just been doing bad things for so many lifetimes, you might think that you can never find redemption. You might find, think that you can never find your way back to the light. They're starting to try to find hope that, that they can. And the benevolent Draco are, are really holding space so powerfully for this because they, they say it's the benevolent Draco holding this space, holding this energy, holding this gravity, right? Holding this gravity, holding this magnetism saying, yes, yes, yes. You can put yourself back together. Yes, 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 you can heal. Yes, 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 you are good. Yes, 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 you are good. Because in the beginning, we were all one. In the beginning, you were good. In the beginning, you were part of source consciousness. You still are part of, part of source consciousness. And it's just all wrapping this up together. I know, I'm re I know I'm like looping and repeating myself a little bit, but that's the only way I can really get this out. <sighs> anyway. It all comes full circle look at this stone it was once one stone it's even like a stone hugging itself it was once one it was split in half now it is put back together though that's the lovers right we're talking lovers on a human level like literal physical lovers we're talking soulmates we're talking self and higher self we're talking self and source we're talking all particles of consciousness in all that is all reuniting to be all that is right everything returning to unity everything returning to harmony all that is is all that is and all that is is all that is I don't know. <laughs> I don't know any other way to put it. I'm going to just get one final card here. Wow. <laughs> Contribution. Download Global Impact Consciousness. <laughs> so here I have been talking about these benevolent Draco, these bearers of the torch, about how you, you guys... And you know, if you don't feel that you are personally part of the Draco collective, that you feel like if you've never been a Draco, you're not part of this you can still contribute to this effort and you already are like if you've watched this whole video and it's been resonating even though you're kind of holding yourself apart from it you can contribute to this effort and you already are i think i just totally repeated myself but man guys i'm feeling like loopy in a literal level right now like my thoughts are just going in circles <laughs> thank you for just listening along right download global impact consciousness this is literally what you're doing this is knowing that you, that your personal story, that your energy work every day that you do naturally without thinking about it is impacting the global consciousness. So literally all of earth consciousness, but this is way bigger. This is like impacting universal consciousness. Look at this symbolism here, this big triangle, this higher consciousness, this higher energy being downloaded down here. That's, a, that's the six pointed star. That's the Merkaba. That's your light body. You are downloading enormous, absolutely enormous amounts of source energy. And you know what? I keep seeing lately how this is a two-way street. This is a two-way highway, guys. You are downloading energy. You are downloading energy that helps you impact the planet. You are a channel for this energy. It's like more to the point, you are the channel through which this energy flows, right? You are the channel through which this energy flows. And I think this is coming out in this Draco reading because this is about the red ray, right? If you fully, fully, fully want to be a complete, fully effective or most effective channel for higher energy, for divine energy, we need to have our root chakras and our earth star chakras like operating, right? And 
most star seeds have really been struggling to calibrate <laughs> their lower chakras. Most of us have seriously messed up lower chakras. But at the time, we, at the time I'm recording this video, right? Especially if you've been kind of following my videos, um, you know, for however long that's been for you, if you've been kind of synchronizing with these energies, then we have been doing massive amounts of work calibrating our lower chakras and we have really had a lot of success with that so just know that at the time you're reading this your relationship to your red ray energy it's like maybe you didn't even have any red ray energy before i know that like for me my husband sees auras sometimes and he sees that like i'm all like blue I'm a lot of blue in, in my vibration, a lot of blue, a little bit of violet, a little bit of green, sometimes a little bit of yellow. Um, I have like no red, I have no red. <laughs> um, and I've been, so I've been like learning ways to work with Red Ray. And that's been a whole experience for me and he healing my root chakra, right? So just know that by the time you see this video, you have made massive strides and had a lot of success working with the red ray, healing your relationship with the red ray, integrating some red ray energies. Some of you have a lot of red in your aura, especially those of you who resonate um, as having been Draco in a past life, right? Um, and you're getting your red ray like clarified, cleaned up, cleaned out, and more fully operational, bringing it online and getting into the higher frequencies of red, which is like love and joy and ecstasy and euphoria and creation in the physical and creating change in the physical um anyway so the point is is that to get that red ray that root chakra to get that operational that's how you fully get the energy down into your body and down into the earth so you have done this you now now more than ever by the time you see this video whenever this is this is timeless you have a greater capacity than ever before to experience your personal empowerment in your physical human body and to create change in the physical in a way that is beneficial for you and everyone around you and to create the life that you want for yourself because you are now impacting the physical world with it's like you're more in harmony with the physical world so now the physical world can match your vibration more easily before you were out of harmony. So trying to create change in your physical life was really difficult because it was like, there was like a disconnect. So things never really worked out exactly the way you wanted them to because everything was disconnected. But now it's like you're way more connected, way more connected than you've ever been and you're in harmony. So now it's like when you sing a note, the earth can actually vibrate with the song you are singing. It can, it can repeat that note back to you. And that's how you can create, you can materialize, you can manifest, you can create change in the physical. Um, but so anyway, my point is that this is a two-way street. You are also uploading, 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 sending this information up and creating change up in the non-physical realms, up in the, the realm of consciousness, sending all this sensory data upwards so that, this is really important, it's so that non-physical consciousness can have more of what we have down here. We come down here to create, to like find new things to create. Like maybe you want to create like a Willy Wonka wonderland, right? That's got like candy, like forests made of candy and like rivers made of orange juice or like whatever it is that like, you know, you can create like wonderlands like that. like a forest of french fries <laughs> where you could just go and you could eat french fries right off the tree right yeah <laughs> after living an earth life if there's something you come down into the physical and you really find that you really like french fries well then when you leave your body and go back up into into like non-physical consciousness you can create these like simulated physical realms where you have sensory experiences and of course then you can eat as many french fries as you want because you're not in a physical body and you can go into french fry for forest 
<laughs> with even like a Coca-Cola fountain, right? You can, you can create these experiences that are just fun, that are sensory in nature, and you can experience them up there. Um, and of course, they can be really cool up there because you, you won't be limited to things like laws of physics or to like how many french fries can the physical body eat at once without becoming sick. You can just have these kind of really interesting, crazy experiences. Um, but beyond that, this is also, um, man, I think this is going to be a topic for another reading, but I'm just going to throw it out there now and maybe I'll pick up this idea again. You are uploading your emotional experiences so that other souls who have yet to incarnate can learn from them. So you've gone through all of these incredible emotional experiences, energetic experiences, literally everything you have learned in all of your physical lives. You're uploading those so that new souls that have never incarnated, they can experience that vicariously. They can literally go into like a, a consciousness simulation and relive your lives and learn what you have learned. And then when they come down into physical, into physical experience, they will have the benefit of your, all of your experience. Because when, yeah, okay, this is, this is going to get onto a hole. I'm going to put a pin in that. I will pick up on this topic again in the future reading, but <sighs> suffice to say, I don't know. I'm done. <laughs> I'm, I'm done. My words are done. This energy is done. Something has been concluded here. I will pick up on this in the future, guys. Sending you so much love and light. I'll talk to you later. Bye.